rare oil, a very high ranking position in the scientific and medical spheres. But I mentioned another important thing that while I was giving a lecture in a sports club in Alexandria called Sporting Club, a gentleman approached me after the lecture and he presented me with a book he wrote and asked me to read the book and give him my opinion about it. The book is called Is That Moses? And there was the figure of a man on the cover of the book. And when I read the book, I found it the most fascinating book because this gentleman said, I am not a scholar in Islam. I'm not a da'i, a caller to Islam. I am a computer engineer, and I wanted to apply my skills in the service of Islam. And he said to combat a Zionist allegation that Moses and his followers did not live in Egypt, but they lived in Western Arabia. And the Exodus actually took place from Northern Arabia, not from Egypt. He said, I tried to study the area in southern Sinai, which is traditionally known as the area of the, where uh, the Exodus took place. And he said, I went to a program called Google Earth and kept on enlarging and decreasing the scale. And for my surprise, I saw on Mount Sinai the name of Allah engraved in the rocks with a scale that cannot be achieved by man. The Jews also deny that a valley with the name of Wadi Tuwa is not in Sinai. Said it is in Northern Arabia. And despite the fact that we know that Bedouins usually use the same name in very many different areas, because the name would signify something, some particular quality. He said, for my surprise, I found under the name of Allah on Mount Sinai, the letter Ta, the first letter in the name Tuwa. And he said, I found the Waw, the second letter in the word Tuwa, engraved in the bottom of the valley. And the Ya, the last letter in the word, it's the three letter word, is on Mount Catherine, which is facing Mount Sinai. And he said, this proved to me that this is the blessed mountain where Allah has given Moses his prophethood, his messengerhood, has given him the Torah. And the valley where the Tuwa, as mentioned in the Quran, it is exactly this valley. And he said, with further detail, I found the photograph of a human being below the name of Allah. And that's why the image arose in my mind, the question, can this be the image of Musa? Moses, may Allah be pleased with him. And that's why he named his book, Is This Moses? And he said, of course, this observation encouraged me to go to Mount Arafat and look at it also under different magnifications. I found the same word, Allah, the name of Allah, engraved in the rocks at the top of Mount Arafat. And I found the image of a Bedouin below the name. But he said, I couldn't dare say, is this the image of Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the book was very interesting to read, and it gave me an insight to speak about Wadi Tuwa and Mount Sinai as definitely being in the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula. It can never ever be anywhere. And these signs indicated by this gentleman has emphasized the fact that Mount Sinai is the blessed mountain where Allah, or glory be to him, spoke to Moses, peace be upon him, and it cannot be anywhere else. And the more we look into these Quranic verses that have something to deal with our present world, the more we can find enough testimony, enough proofs that the Quran can never be the work of man. It is the divine word.
in its divine purity. And then we go to another verse, also related to olives, but this is in Surah Atin, verses 1 to 3, and this is the 95th chapter in the glorious Quran. And the two verses, or the three verses, read, وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونِ وَطُورِ سِينِينَ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ and as we mentioned earlier, when a Quranic verse comes in the context of an oath, this is a way of directing our attention to the importance by which the oath is given and by the answer of the oath. And we emphasize here again that Allah, all glory be to Him, is far, far above giving an oath to us, human beings. We are His creation. Who are we that Allah should give us an oath? But when a Quranic verse comes in the context of an oath, it is a way of directing our attention to the importance of the matter by which the oath is given and the importance of the answer of the oath. We read Wattini wa Zaytun by the fig and the olive, Waturi Sinin and by the Mount of Sinai. وهذا البلد الأمين and by this city of security meaning مكة المكرمة and one would wonder really why should Allah give an oath by the fig and the olive only very recently the dean of the faculty of agriculture in Al-Azhar University had a scientific leave from his position and he spent that leave in Japan and he's a botanist and he started to work on olive oil and in a personal discussion with the chairman of the department where he was spending his leave the issue of the olive oil came into being then this gentleman told him the olive is mentioned in the glorious Quran six times and they start working on the chemical composition of the olive oil and distinguished many of the beneficial components in it and they started to study the fig and they found in the fig a certain enzyme which they called ficine from fig and notice that this enzyme is badly needed by the human body and it can only be found in the fig and this discussion made the Japanese colleague to ask the Muslim professor can we combine the fig with the olive oil and test whether it has got any value in dealing with the human body they mixed six quantities of olive oil with one quantity of fig and this is the ratio of their mentioning in the Quran they couldn't get any exciting results so the Japanese colleague asked the Egyptian professor can there be any notion to the olive oil in the Quran and he said let me look and he found the verse we discussed before and he said it's seven so they tried mixing seven volumes of olive oil with one volume of fig and they reached surprising results which we'll cover inshallah after a short break and until we meet I thank you for listening and greet you in our Islamic way السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. This is Yasser Qadi, and you're watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. The voice of truth. That Allah does not look at your face, but rather Allah looks at your heart and looks at your action. We Muslims know. 
Life is a test. And so in order for us to have peace, there must be standards, there must be proof. The voice of justice. Indeed, to all nations we send a messenger that they will call people to worship one God, Allah. The one who is the only one who can grant true peace. That we are looking for. The voice of peace. The last and final instruction manual for the human being it is the glorious Quran. It's the glorious Quran. The voice standing up for all of humanity against all falsehood. Islamic voice tomorrow at 10:30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 1 p.m. India on Peace TV. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this, while others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal, halal, halal. while others say, nope, this is haram. haram. Are, you confused? are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al-Ahkam, where with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Quran and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim Al Hakim in Umdatul Ahkam every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11:30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 6 a.m. India on Peace TV. Dialogue. Dialogue. Discussion, 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 debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal conclusion, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire next on Peace TV. Coming back from this short break. I greet you in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before the break, we were discussing a very recent event between two professors, one from Egypt, the other one from Japan. They were studying the unique characteristics of the olive oil. And through the discussion, they came to realize that olive is mentioned in the glorious Quran six times, and the fig is mentioned only once. And the fig in their analysis proved to have a certain enzyme which is beneficial to the human body, which are they called ficine, and is only found in the fig. So they try to see if they can mix six volumes of olive oil with one volume of fig and see if there are any beneficial medical value from this mixing. They could not find anything more than treating with or using each component separately. So the Japanese professor asked the Muslim professor, is there any other notion to the olives in the Quran other than the six explicit ones and the Muslim professor remembered the verse which we discussed before this one, which reads, And it doesn't have the name of the olive, olive tree, explicitly, but it's an indirect way of indicating the olive and the olive tree. So they try to mix seven volumes of the olive oil with one volume of the fig, and they reached wonderful results in treating a large number of ailments by this mixture. And this here points to the beauty of recording anything in the Quran in definite number. And then the oath by the fig and the olive is really a way of directing our attention to the importance of using that mixture. What worries he mean? This is again another emphasis on the fact that the blessed mound from which 
Allah or glory be to him addressed Moses peace be upon him and gave him the Torah is the Mount Sinai in the southern part of the Sinai Peninsula and is not anywhere else the third verse reads وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينِ meaning Mecca and we have mentioned before that modern earth sciences has proved that all the land masses we live on today actually started from an oceanic island, a volcanic island that was in the middle of an inundating ocean. And this volcanic island grew into one major continent, which is known as the mother continent or the mother of all continents. And then this mother continent was split by a system of faulting to the seven continents of today. And the continents started to drift away from each other until they reached their current positions. And continents are still drifting today, but at a much slower rate than before. And this slow rate can be detected by equipments, but cannot be felt by man. When the distance between Mecca, al mukarrama and the extremities of the seven known continents, it was found to be exactly equal, 13,600 kilometers. And this indicated that the land of Mecca, or Al-Haram al makki must have been the initial piece of land that was created on the surface of that planet. That's why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is quoted to have said, إن هذه البلدة حرمها الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض لا يعضض شوكها ولا ينفر صيضها ولا تلتقط لقطتها إلا لمن أراد أن يعرف بها. This village or this town was made forbidden by Allah on the day He has created the heavens and the earth. إن هذه البلدة حرمها الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض لا يعضض شوكها. Even if you find a spiny plant. You cannot take it off for its place. You cannot really harm any animal that's allowed in Islam to be caught in this blessed area. If you find a bag of money thrown on the ground, don't touch it. Unless you are going to ask to whom it belongs. You ask for the owner of it. So really, this is just a small part of the importance of Mecca, or glory be to it. Not only this, but science also has proven that the longitude of Mecca is the only longitude that points through geographic north to Polaris in a horizontal projection of the map of the world. There are many other signs that can testify to the holiness of Mecca. But it's not the time to discuss it now, but I wanted to just answer the question why Allah, or glory be to him, was given oath by Mecca. وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينِ This is the center of the globe. This lies under the Kaaba of the angels in the seventh firmament as indicated by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It lies at the axis of the universe, a line starting from the Kaaba of the angels, traversing the seven firmaments, coming to Mecca, the Kaaba of the human beings, traversing the seven earths twice, and traversing the seven firmaments again, and all this is encompassed by the chair of the throne of Allah, all glory be to him, which is in the domain of the unseen. We cannot say anything about it. So really, many Quranic verses and many sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, testify for the nobility of the Meccan place and the holiness of this place. So this may justify the oath given by Allah, all glory be to him, 
by the fig, by the olives, by the Mount Sinai, and by Mecca al mukarramah the place or the city of security. And this can also prove to us why Allah, all glory be to him, has made Hajj and Umrah, the greater Hajj and the smaller Hajj, really a right for himself over all Muslims, grown up, sane, capable, both physically and materially. If he doesn't perform a Hajj, he will be held responsible for that. And Allah doesn't get anything from our performing Hajj or Umrah. But it is a great mercy from Allah, or glory be to him, because he wants every man or woman, grown up, rational, reasonable, free, capable, to do this pilgrimage, the greater or the smaller one, and both, and the greater pilgrimage only once per life, at least, because he, or glory be to him, wants every one of us to be exposed to the blessings of the place, Mecca al mukarramah during the most blessed days of the year, the 10 days of the Hijjah, so that the reward from Allah would be multiplied amply, millions of folds. And this is one of the mercies of Allah, one of the great bounds of Allah on us, and one of the ways that Allah can forgive us our sins, can wash us from our own sins, can accept our repentance, can accept our dua for him, going to Mecca during the first 10 days of the month of the Hijjah. And if prayer in the Haram of Mecca is rewarded 100,000 times in any day of the year, and here we can see the reason behind giving this divine oath in three verses at the beginning of Surah At-Teen. And here we emphasize again that Allah, all glory be to him, is above giving an oath to us. And until we meet in the coming episode, I thank you for listening and greet you in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be with you all.